Good morning, I'm Harley Schlanger from the LaRouche Organization with your daily video update for November 1st, 2024. Well, I've just spent the last two weeks traveling through the United States and can see why people are on edge. There's election anxiety, there's a problem of censorship, we're in endless wars, endless inflation, uh, and a, a lot of verbiage which goes nowhere coming from the politicians. So it's reflected in the questions I received for today, and I've picked three of them to begin to deconstruct what's the problem and point to some solutions. And the most important solution, I would say, is take a look at the link in the description box for the International Peace Coalition weekly meeting. It's a Zoom call. You can all join it. And I think you'll find that we're pulling together the council of reason that Helga Zepp has called for with senior officials from intelligence, from politics, from uh, various countries, 40-some countries participating, to have a dialogue to remove, the, remove us from the realm of insanity into a, a kind of quality of thinking needed to escape the crisis. And ultimately, we need a classical renaissance. That's the solution to the questions that I've been getting. So let me take up the questions first from Thomas Blumstein, who writes to us regularly. He basically says, it's clear, given the crisis, we need something more than reform, a fundamental change, because we need to take care of the most vulnerable. The question is, how do you get there? And it's clear that many people have given up on the idea that you can do something on the large scale to alleviate the suffering which is coming from the decisions being made by the Western oligarchy. And by Western oligarchy, I mean the U.S., NATO, the political leadership in, in most of the Western countries, which is addicted at this point to war. It's run by large volumes of money coming from corporate uh, cartels who benefit from war, who use geopolitics as a way of dividing the world, dividing the populations, identity politics in the United States to pit people against each other, instead of coming up with the idea of a mission for humanity as a whole. Now, how do you do that? That's the importance of classical art and a renaissance. I refer people back to the Sarah Vega event of last Saturday, which interspersed uh, sharp political commentary with beautiful music. And the importance of classical art is that the classical artists are people who have operated from a commitment to look to the best of mankind, to look at the soul of, of people, to expose the soul and to bear our soul to ideas that are beautiful and images that are beautiful, which express that which is characteristic of mankind. Excuse the noise, I have a printer sitting next to me. Uh, but it's through classical culture that we see the best ideas from the most advanced minds, advanced from the standpoint of aesthetical education. And that's why it was the golden renaissance in Italy in the 15th century, which triggered the emergence of modern, the modern nation state, and which has offered us a means of participation in government by citizens, not just by oligarchs, but by the average citizen, to bring about change. And that's what we need if we're going to solve this crisis today. So I think the answer to the question of fundamental change is that all of us have to change. We have to take into our hearts and minds that any suffering on the planet is a suffering for us, and that to overcome it, there are solutions. And as we've been pointing to, the move to a new strategic and economic development architecture is a step in the right direction. Now, the second question uh, is from Mark, who sent me a document talking about, the title was, The Greens Are Really Brown. This is an old theme that the LaRouche Organization has uh, presented over the years, going back to 
Lyndon LaRouche's exposure of the so-called green movement or the environmental movement as taking the desire of people for clean air, clean water, for a healthy environment, and instead imposing an anti-science, anti-technology doctrine, which was a cover for depopulation. Central to this was, besides the Club of Rome, which was an oligarchical institution promoting population control, reduction of population, the central document which defines this was the 1975 classified document under the direction of Henry Kissinger, National Security Study Memo 200, which called for using food as a weapon to reduce population, primarily in the growing population centers of the global south. And this was a classic Malthusian document, which was a thin cover for the intent of Kissinger, which was to use U.S. and NATO military power to impose economic policies that would allow the West to continue to plunder the raw material wealth and the physical labor of the nations of the developing sector by imposing on them <clears throat> international monetary fund conditionalities, credit cutoff, sanctions, civil wars, to defeat any government which, strive, which strove for sovereign economic development of its nation. That's what we've seen repeatedly, going back to the 1953 coup in Iran. We've seen it in every single war the United States has been involved in, which we not only have not won, but have imposed misery on other countries, as well as on our own citizens and soldiers. We see this again with the Ukraine war, a war which was provoked by NATO expansion, which has as its design to undermine Russia's leadership and the targeting of China for the same purpose. What's Russia and China's leadership pointing towards? A new security and development architecture around the BRICS. And so the question that's posed by this is who gains from green policy? We see energy prices skyrocketing. We see Germany going into deindustrialization. We see infrastructure collapsing everywhere. And we're told it's because we produce too much CO2 and that it's because we have too many projects to improve the lives of people. Well, I've linked a pamphlet, I put a link to a pamphlet in the description section on LaRouche's exposure of green fascism. And Mark was absolutely right in bringing this up. This continues to be a problem. Too many people blindly accept the idea that we have to adopt anti-scientific policy, which ultimately will lead to depopulation. And this is something which all of us can recognize if we study it a little bit and think about it. And we should all become committed to this idea of scientific and technological progress as the solution to the problems that we face, not the cause of the problems. Now, finally, there's a third email I received from Mark Otting, in which he sent me two papers. One is on the lost art of diplomacy, and the other is on the need to develop a concept of the collective Trump. Now, the first one is obvious. There is no diplomacy. Antony Blinken, the Secretary of State of the United States, and his colleagues, such as Foreign Minister Baerbach of Germany, Lamy of, of the United Kingdom, and, and others, don't believe in diplomacy. They refuse to negotiate. They believe in imposing the power of what Blinken calls uh, the unipolar order. And what we see from this the so-called rules-based order, is they mean by that rules that benefit the oligarchs of the corporate cartels by destroying nations, by allowing national sovereignty, by not allowing national sovereignty, so that nations are not able to emerge from under the conditions imposed on them by the global banks. Now, what is diplomacy? It's negotiation. It's talking. 
What would be lost by sitting down with Putin and discussing a solution to Ukraine? This was on the table from 2014 to 2022. For eight years, Putin raised the question of legitimate security concerns for both Russia and Ukraine, and he was rebuffed by the West repeatedly, to the point that when he said that the Russians will not allow Ukraine to come into NATO, the push was more aggressive, not only to bring Ukraine into NATO, but to build up the Ukrainian army and military to prepare for war with Russia. That's what the Minsk Accord, which was supposedly a peace agreement that was supposedly supported by Zelensky, was acknowledged by two of the uh, protagonists in it, Hollande of France and, and Merkel of Germany, that it was intended to buy time for Ukraine to build up its military capability. So that's not negotiations. That's not diplomacy. The opportunity is there to end this war. But who wants to continue it? Well, the collective Biden team is committed to continuing this war. At the same time, you have from President, former President Trump a commitment to ending the Ukraine war, but continuing the war in the Middle East by giving Israel the weapons they need to carry out a destruction of legitimate resistance forces. And I'm not saying, in saying that, I'm not saying that Hamas was justified in its attacks on October 7th, but certainly Israel's response to that is not justified. It's, a, it's an example of war crimes. So diplomacy, you don't kill the diplomats you're supposed to negotiate with, as Israel has done. So I, I certainly agree with what, what Mark is getting at. Now, in the question of the collective Trump, I've just written a piece which I'll include in the description section on the collective Biden. You know, who's really making decisions in the United States? And Mark suggested we need a picture of that for Trump, because in the first Trump administration, whatever good intentions he had were, were undermined by people like John Bolton and Mike Pompeo. And Pompeo is still in the circle of advisors to Trump, which is a cause of concern. So I think what Mark is getting at is that we need to get a picture of who's making the decisions were Trump to be elected. We have the election coming up in, in just days, um, but we'll work on that. But the important thing is, instead of having these collective gangs of operatives working for the global corporate cartels, what we need is an active, committed, passionate citizenry that's willing to fight to realize the best ideals that exist in our country and in Western civilization. And that can best be accomplished through a commitment to a classical education program, the, the, a, a renewed classical renaissance, which provides the most beautiful ideas available to nurture the minds of all its citizens. So thanks for joining me today. Use the links in the description section to take advantage of these offerings from me to, and the LaRouche organization to become part of that awakened, impassioned citizenry to overcome the pessimism that's been deliberately imposed on all of us.